Shut up and sit down. Welcome to the Answers Yes podcast, where we will explore the cause and effect of just saying yes in your everyday life or in business. I will dig into topics that are not just stimulating, but will challenge you to be better in everything you do. The podcast is based on the simplicity of saying yes to opportunities you might encounter every single day. I'm your host, Jim Riley. Join me in my first series titled, Blue Collar Redefined. Hey, welcome to this week's show, The Answer is Yes podcast. I hope you've been enjoying them. And if you have, please share them with a friend. Give us a rating on iTunes. It means the world to me. It keeps us going and keeps us strong. I thought I'd utilize this week pre-show to talk a little bit about why we are doing this in the first place. And when I was at first approached by my business partner, Eric Morley at Blue Sea Advertising, he had suggested I do a podcast for business purposes, SEO traffic to our wine direct website, which is Baja United Wines, and kind of build up our web following. But within that discussion, we started talking about well, what would the podcast look like and what would we talk about. And I'd always had this dream of doing some public speaking or what they call keynote speaking about different topics, mainly about just life in general and how I've gotten to where I am today and some of the pitfalls and you know the upsides of things that I've done. I thought that there is a tremendous lesson to be learned within all of that in my life. I just turned 50 and I've had some great careers and um, I've been very fortunate to have some success in my life. I thought by sharing some of my stories that people could learn and maybe it would encourage them to get off their butts and I call that B-U-T apostrophe S and get out and do something. So I figured if we interviewed a bunch of business leaders, people that whether you went to college or didn't or you did, did trade school or something other, that by listening to their stories that you would benefit and maybe help you make a decision along the way um, or just encourage you to continue down the path that you're on. And I've heard from a lot of people about their own personal stories or about podcasts that have resonated with them. And it, it really is encouraging for me that we are hitting a note here for people and, and maybe just if we help one person ever or one person per show, that would be phenomenal. Um, you know, and that's why we're doing it. So I think that as we continue along, I will search for guests that will appeal to a different audience that as you listen to the show, maybe think about what you can learn from their experience and their trials and tribulations along the way. And this week's show is no different. I've got my good friend as of the last couple of years, somebody that I've been working with and, and had a business relationship. His name is Richard Haraga and he is the founder and CEO of GQ6 hydration mix. And he's got a great story, great supplements. And I'm really excited to bring his story to you because this is a guy that has practiced what he preached and has worked hard along the way to achieve success. And I don't think his story's over yet. And he's still working hard and grinding it out. But he's got a wonderful family. He's extremely happy. And I would say that if you could follow in his footsteps, that you would also find happiness. So with that, I'm going to turn this over to my interview with Richard from GQ6. Welcome to the Answer Yes podcast. We are here in Orange County, California. I'm at the Center Club, compliments of Henry Park. Thank you so much, Henry. We're enjoying your hospitality, and I know we're going to be catching up here shortly. But today, I've got my good friend Richard Hiraga on the line, or here in person, I should say. Richard, good to see you, buddy. Hi, Jim. Good to see you. We spend so much time on the phone talking about business things, and I had the unique opportunity to learn about your life over our run a weekend ago, and it's a pretty incredible story. Well, the run was pretty incredible, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was just another average Saturday for me, our Sunday. <laughs> for those of you that don't know, Jim ran down from Bali to GMR and then back from GMR back up to Bali, 26 point two or more miles. <laughs> yeah, and you supported me with some GQ6, which I needed. Mm. Um, I think, you know, they say in a marathon, the hardest part is that point two. And we got back to your van having to run up the road to get the point two. There's no way I wasn't going to do it, but that was hard. <laughs> <laughs> that, that extra little uphill. Yeah, I think you're, you know, they say that when you can see the finish line, it, it makes it a lot easier towards the end there. But then when you have to go beyond that, you know, your, your body starts to shut down. I was ready to be done. You were incredible. Yeah, well, thank you for being yeah, there for me. Absolutely. 
Um, but what I did learn in the process is an incredible story of yours. And I've known you to, to be an incredible person just in general, But and I, and I love your business and uh, what you do at GQ6 and everything. But I didn't know much about the man behind that company um, beyond maybe a year before you got it started. And I would love to talk about when things started for you because I was literally, I'm running and you're just blowing me away with your story. So can we, can we start in your early years, maybe with your first job? Cause I think that that's what blew me away. Sure. Yeah. You know, um, so we grew up like you did. We grew up in a, a middle-class working family. My dad was a mechanic and he mm-hmm. worked really hard to put us through, uh, give us the things that we needed. Um, we were going to parochial school at the time. So he was working two jobs and mowing the lawn at the church. Um, and my, uh, my mom had contracted cancer yeah. uh, when I was young. I think I was about 11 or 12. Um, so things got really tight and I went to work for a, at 13, went to work in a Chinese restaurant, mm-hmm. washing dishes and they, they taught me how to, uh, how to cook. So that was a lot of fun. Um, but I learned the value of money. Um, I, I've heard your podcasts and I think I've heard other people's podcasts and we all started out with paper routes and mowing lawns and things like that. So yeah. we learned uh, uh, the value of money pretty quickly and, and what kind of independence that gave us. Uh, but for me, going to work that early was really to help out the family. Yeah. Um, things were pretty tight. So I uh, went to work there and then w- moved around and worked my way through there to Pup and Taco. Uh, not the proudest moment of, of my <laughs> life. I, uh, the tacos are good, though. <laughs> oh, I um, I work for I work for Puff and Taco one day, and, and I just thought, you know, I mean, I was I was I was working, and my friends came through, and you know, you do the, the friends discount. And yeah. The manager called me up and said, "Hey," he goes, "Can you add this up for me?" And I added it up because then there were no calculators. You did everything on a blackboard. Yeah. So you took the order on a blackboard and you added it up on a blackboard, and I added it up, and he goes, "That's that's 100 percent correct." goes why wasn't that same order the same price before and i'm like oh oh wow so he said uh that's okay he goes that's cool it happens all the time he goes but if you want to stay you could stay but if you want to leave he goes it's probably best that you might wow go ahead and leave today and i said okay so i i left and you know i was i was working a couple jobs at the time i was working at a gas station and some other things to earn some extra money and my neighbor offered me a job going to work at a grocery store Uh uh-huh and uh, it was in Newport Beach, and I lived in Garden Grove, and I was uh, 15 mm-hmm. at the time. And uh, so he drove me down there, and, and I had my interview in, in the Country Boy Saloon. That's no longer there. <laughs> that's kind of where the manager hung out. Okay. Um, and there's a cool story behind that, but we won't get into it. Um, but I interviewed for the job as a box boy, and I think at the time, and that was... Oh, mid seventies, uh, early seventies. Um, I think minimum wage was like a buck fifty, I think, and box boys were making four dollars and eighty cents an hour. So I took the job. Okay. You know, I was offered the job and I took it and I went home and I said, Hey, I'm gonna go work at Stater Brothers in Newport Beach, or Costa Mesa. It's right on the border. And um, you know, I told my I told my dad and he uh, um, he said no. He says too far, and you're not you're not going out that way. And he said no to you taking the job. He, he said no to me taking the job. Wow. And he said, look, you know, we we need the money. My dad was a, a good man. I mean, he was a a very proud man. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think to him, me <laughs> moving aside and 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 going so far away for a job um, to make money and and to be more independent was you know was tough. We were I was one of five kids. I'm right in the middle. Um, but I just kind of needed to do something to try to help out. And, you know, I, I wanted things as a kid. I wanted a yearbook and I wanted clothes and things like that we couldn't afford. And so at $4 and 80 cents an hour, I said, you know, I'm, I'm going to do that. And he goes, well, I don't know how you're going to do it. Cause you're not going to live here. So my, um, my buddy at the time, he, he worked at the state of brothers. He had a van and I, uh, I got to move into his van for a little while. That, to me, is so incredible. You were already working a little bit, so your dad was okay with you bouncing around those other jobs, but this one really made a statement to him for some reason. It, it did. Well, because, I mean, I, I work near the house. I could ride my bike. I can walk to work. It mm-hmm. was part-time, and I was, you know, I mean, I'm in school. And, you know, I'm supposed to be studying and, and going to school, not not working. Um, but 
uh, I just, you know, at $4.80 when everyone's making a dollar fifty, and money meant a lot to us at that time because uh, it was so tight, I, I decided I was going to do it. And I think my dad um, really thought I wasn't going to follow through. Uh-huh. And, um, you know, kind of did the whole dad thing, kind of threatened, okay, if you do this, this is what happens. And I still said, you know what, I'm going to do it. Well, so, big, big step. Yeah. Um, is it important to talk about uh, the culture behind your family and the environment that you were growing up in? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it is. I mean, it, you know, we're, we were, um, you know, uh, I'm Japanese and we are predominantly in we were predominantly in a in a in an area in Garden Grove at the time that was full of dairy farms and orange groves. Um, you know, I'm I'm 56, so uh, we weren't developed. The Orange County really wasn't as developed at yeah. the time. So there were just a bunch of working class guys and um, guys that really work work super hard. But um, my dad was prideful. Yeah. Um, you know, coming losing everything and coming back and using his GI Bill to, to buy a house for a dollar. That he didn't know if he was going to be able to pay that three hundred dollar mortgage. Wow! You know, <laughs> could you imagine? <laughs> and uh, the house, my my um, my dad had passed away uh, quite a few years ago, but uh, his wife, my you know, he remarried a long time after my mom had passed away, but she still lives in the house. So uh, that house is fifty seven years old. Mm. I grew up. I was born in it. Um, wow! You know, and it's everything is sprawled around it. Um, I mean, we used to go in the backyard, and there was a dairy farm, so we used to just hop the fence and. Going round and round in the muck. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, type of thing. I bet. So you took this job at Stater Brothers, and uh, you know you lived in the van. Um, how did that work out for you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, as a kid, it was pretty fun. I mean, but it was like camping, right? But it it wasn't home. Yeah. You know, it wasn't home. It was just, you know, you question yourself whether you're doing the right thing, and you know, you don't have any money, you don't have any support, really. I mean, I've got my buddy who's really cool guy. Marty um, yeah. was, was awesome. He, he, he lived in our neighborhood and he, as little kids, he, he was older and we used to hang out with him and he used to let us ride his motorcycles and stuff like that. But, um, it wasn't home, you know, in the back of my mind, I always knew that, you know, I'd done something that upset my father. I didn't understand it at the time. Yeah. You know, I understand, I didn't understand why he was upset that I was going to make money. Yeah. Um, I do now, Yeah. Uh, especially as a dad. But uh, at that time, it was just all about independence. Yeah. Based on listening to your story on our famous run ride, you talk about your quick succession um, going through the ranks at Stater Brothers and um, building your career there. What, what did that look like in brief? Well, you know, I mean, Stater Brothers was a great company to work for. Um, I, and they're still a great company, I believe. And, and um, if you worked hard, you were rewarded. Mm-hmm. Um, they ran a real small payroll, um, so they didn't have a lot of a lot of people in the shop. So everyone had to do what they had to do, and I was willing to do anything. So it was I was quickly promoted to checker, and then by the time I was eighteen, I was carrying keys. Yeah. Um, I think by the time I was nineteen or twenty, I was I was a store manager. Wow. Oh. Um, and um, just liked working. I mean, one thing that I gathered from you telling me the stories along the way in your career was it really came down to working hard and smart. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, everyone, yeah, I've owned a bunch of companies. I've, I'm an entrepreneur, a serial entrepreneur, and I've, I've haven't worked for a lot of companies. Um, the companies I work for, I, I think I can count them on one hand, mm-hmm. um, including my own. Um, but people ask, you know, how, how do you become successful? How do you, you know, how do you get to where you're at? And I just say, you just have to work hard. I mean, I didn't get a chance to go to college um, because I was making money. Um, yeah. I was paying my way and, and trying to just make it um, through life. Yeah. Um, but I knew if I worked hard and I made money, I could pay the bills. Yeah, sure. And so it just really came down to working hard, being honest, showing up every day, you know, doing a little bit extra. Um, Stater Brothers working off the clock if I had to, which got me in trouble with the union. But <laughs> <laughs> Um, and there's funny stories behind that, but, um, you know, I just, I will do whatever I have to do. Yeah. You, know? you told me a story about your shoes at work one day. What was that about? Yeah. So I'm, I'm running carts. So back in the day at State of Brothers, you ran carts, um, and, and, you know, shopping carts and you don't see people running around chasing shopping carts anymore. And, and most 
places they have an electric thing that they hook up to yeah. that pushes the carts. Well, we had to run out 